It's so tiny. It's so tiny, but you can you can see a slight discoloration on that hook. Anyway, so that's yeah. It's like when you got cheap earrings and they like right. the cheap silver earrings, they start like getting a little green. That's kind of the vibe it's giving. That's, that's, a, that's a positive thing. There's a lot of fish hooks in the water, but Thomas Floyd put them there on purpose. This is some, um, half of the crate is, is buried now, but luckily my hooks are at the top. So this one, this one's easier, easier to see. In this spot, he's put one of those crates out in the stream to study how long the hooks stay sharp and unrusted in the wild and how they might impact snapping turtles and the large, elusive salamanders called hellbenders. He says these species are facing serious population problems, and experts are concerned a part of their struggle might be tied to fish hooks that get caught in their mouths and stomachs. He says he doesn't know of any studies like this that have been done before. Because uh, largely, I think uh, there is a component uh, out there that doesn't want the answer. That's because it may show that fish hooks persist in the environment for longer than we thought, and folks are jonesing for more rules and regulation. This research is focusing on fish hooks that are left in the environment, but to angler Tad Murdoch, the real problem happens during fishing. Um, the real mortality in hooks comes from when you gut hook a fish. Murdoch owns Georgia Wild Trout, a fly fishing guide service, and works with anglers of all experience levels. He says gut hooking is when a fish or turtle swallows the bait and hook whole, which is more common with live bait and food as lures. That's when people are having to cut lines. And that's what kills animals. He says paying attention is key, especially when anglers have set up lines and are sitting and waiting, like catfish fishing, when an angler might not notice the fish has had time to swallow the anyway, bait. So I think the biggest thing is if you're practicing catch and release, it's maybe just better to not use the live bait. Back in the North Georgia stream, Floyd says this study isn't supposed to create roadblocks for anglers. It's uh, going to better help us to understand uh, how best to conserve our, our, uh, our species and uh, at the same time enjoy the, the natural resources uh, that, that are available to, to harvest. He says they'll keep checking the fish hooks for as long as it takes for them to rust. It's a slow moving study, but he says it's just one piece of the work to conserve these species. Marissa Mecki, WABE News.